again. Germany, bro. Go on what we love, baby. My nigga Chris. My nigga Chris. Go on what we love. Nigga Jermaine. What's up? Go on what we love, baby. My nigga BJ back there getting a good stretch. Young Kobe, what's up? How's it doing, baby? There will never be a point in your time in your life where it's the right time to do a great thing. If you're waiting for that perfect, perfect moment, that perfect timing is not going to happen. You know what you have to do? You have to create the perfect time and the perfect opportunity and the perfect situation. So that a lot of people become comfortable. They stop growing, they stop wanting anything, they, they become satisfied. People getting ready to go to jobs that they don't like, jobs that are making them sick. You see, when you're not pursuing your goal, you are literally committing spiritual suicide. When you have some goal out here that you're stretching for and reaching for, that takes you out of your comfort zone, you'll find out some talents and abilities you have that you didn't know you have. When the messenger of misery visits you, what are you going to do? What will keep you in the game? My playing career started at North Little Rock High in North Little Rock, Arkansas. From there, I went on to the University of Central Arkansas. The second semester of my freshman year, I decided to transfer to the University of Arkansas to major in business, all the while pursuing a walk-on position for their men's basketball team. Unfortunately, through the NCAA clearinghouse, I was deemed ineligible for a missing half credit on my core requirements. Following this situation, I decided to transfer to Philander Smith College, a small HBCU in Little Rock, Arkansas. At Philander Smith College, I played four years of collegiate basketball. In my senior year, we won our conference, our conference tournament, and we also made our first ever NAIA national tournament appearance in Kansas City, Missouri. In 2013, I graduated from Philander Smith with a bachelor's in business administration. After graduation, I decided to pursue a professional basketball career. During this time period, I got the chance to experience multiple exposure camps. I went to Dallas, Texas to an NBA D-League's Texas Legends camp where I made the top 25 cut. Unfortunately, I didn't get a call back for that. I also had a chance to work out privately with the Texas Legends. I also did a ABA training camp in Dallas, Texas. Also, I went to Houston, Texas. I've been to Orlando, Florida for exposure camps, and I also got the chance to go to Las Vegas, Nevada for an overseas combine during the same time period as the NBA Summer League. But this interview and this documentary is the main focus of my experience from about five months ago when I got the chance to do a professional tour in Germany.
Cap, man. It's a uh, D-League tryout, man. It's your boy Shelly with my boy Chris. Man. You already know what's up. You hear me? So, uh, you hear how I say it again? Hey, say it like I'm nigga. So, uh, top 25 is what we looking at right now. Out of 100. Out, out of 100. 100. For a D-League team. For the D-League. Top 25, though. First year out of college, son. What you talking about? No agent. No agent. Top 25, my man. What's up? Tell me something. Talk to me. Talk to me, I talk, man. I'm speechless. Let, let, let Chris talk, man. I'm speechless. Check this out. We're going north side. North side. We're holding it down. My nigga show. Me. And a lot of D1 niggas in there. They said this is the most D1 players they had at any tryout in three years. Yeah, the thing. Let me remind you, I'm an NAIA player. This is a D2 player. D2. Everybody counting us out, you feel me? Uh, guess what? Bro. We top 25. This is my top 25 page. <laughs> top 25 page, nigga. That's top my new shit right there. That's my new shit. This shit crazy, bro. Damn! This shit crazy, bro. <laughs> It really wasn't that difficult because the game speed was about the same. We we both used the 24 second shot clock. Um, what I can say is some of their guards have a really high basketball IQ and their bigs are real fundamentally sound. So th that might be one difference I can say I have to adapt to where I'm used to holding guards that are real athletic and real quick opposed to some of their guards are kind of slower but they, they think more methodic methodically about the game so that was a difference The traveling was extremely different for me because we rode the bus or the train to all the games and many times it was like we had to walk 20 minutes just to get to the gymnasium after getting off the, at our stop so that was a big difference and after games we have to walk maybe 15 20 30 minutes and that's just get to the bus stop you know or the train stop and I had this one experience where right after the game we had to walk to the train stop and man it was like 20 minutes through a dark park and we just walking on foot like it was like 10 of us we just walking through a dark park trying to get to our, our stop and, and let me tell you i mean we're black so we're walking through a black dark park and we black so you can only imagine what people felt like if they seen us walking up on maybe this is a gang or something like this so it was just a, a totally different experience that I wasn't used to, especially after a game, having to walk, you know, be a foot soldier. So that was something different. 
Here's the deal, we put the truth in the package It's our gift to you, call this gift rapping On tracks I'm snapping like I just heard a poem No swarm, my name just buzzing up a storm Package deal, yeah that was just the con We just want to give y'all something to bang in your dorms Now we on, straight to the top, where we going? But you gotta watch for people who will use you as a pawn You better wear a seatbelt cause this ride will get turbulent Listen in a couple years and it'll make perfect sense like Denzel and hard lessons I'm trying to teach these niggas but even with the rinse forms it's hard to reach these niggas real talk I mean it was a culture shock I mean like seeing the people where I'm from if you make eye contact with somebody you know hey how you doing or hi how's your day there I mean it's like they didn't want to look at us so that that, that was kind of different um the scenery was awesome, man. It was awesome. Also, they they had some the food. The food was it was alright, but they had one thing called like a doner kebab or something with like chicken or beef. It was kind of like a, a wrap or a sandwich, man. I could eat that every day. I ain't gonna lie. They had turkey legs. It was pretty good. They had roast them in front of you, man. Kind of like rotisserie style. So. I mean, it, it was cool, and then they had like a nice outlet mall, it was open, nice little city. I mean, it was just real chill, like everybody was just, it was quiet, it was cool, it was like a nice little place to, you know, live, it was a cool place. Uh, currency, that was a little different because they used the euro over there, so I'm having like a coin, but it's worth two dollars, and it's about the same size as a, as a quarter, so like at least two or three times I'm at the gas station or checking out somewhere and I accidentally give them a quarter and they looking at me crazy like man what is this and it was mistakenly to be a two dollar euro so that was kind of different I mean other euros like the paper euros is about the same Stare out my window and look into the distance I think about all my sinning and start repenting Lord, I know you're listening I've been praying hard, but even more so I've been thanking God Cause I know I'm privileged and I know I'm gifted So I should doubt the politics, have my dreams restricted I find it funny when people say the sky's the limit Cause those same people then try to cloud your vision Listen to my verse, realize it's more than music Realize it's knowledge, and frankly, you can use it what if I told you Bill Cosby didn't do it? Would your response be the proof is in the pudding? <laughs> I'm only kidding. I hope I am forgiven. How can you be mad at me and I'm only living? Now will you live before you die? I don't know. But isn't it pretty to think so? Isn't it pretty to think so? Yeah, chill day before I go home tomorrow. It was all love, Germany. All love. The ducks. What a stink. Summary of the tour would be day one started for me like early, like two o'clock at night because I had to pack all night and catch a flight at six from Little Rock to Providence, Rhode Island. From Rhode Island, I spent like four hours in the airport waiting for all my teammates to arrive so we could fly out together. So we flew out from the U.S. about 7 p.m. and made it to Germany 
about 7 a.m. Frankfurt, Germany. So it was like a whole time change where you spend, seemed like 12 hours on the plane, but because of the time change, it really wasn't that long of a flight, maybe seven, eight hours. So day one, we get there, we meet up with our uh, our host and all that. And we, we go back to the where we stayed and we, uh, we, I actually took a nap. We ate, we took a nap, and we had a game that night. So it was kind of, you know, getting you, getting your feet back under you after doing all that traveling. You got to go and play against this pro team, which was uh, TV Langer. We end up losing our first game, but then our next three games, we end up beating Kronberg. We beat uh, BCJ Helsin, and then we had a big win over Schwimm, which is a pro B team in Germany. And so that was like an awesome experience. And we also uh, played, I think it's a team in Ope or something like that, TV, TVO Biggies, Biggies or something like that. You know, I, I'm not good with the pronunciation. We ended up losing our last game. So we finished our tour overall, a 3-2 and two record. And, I mean, the tour, it was cool. I mean, I averaged about 19 points a game. We had great team chemistry. We had some fun, fun moments and great experiences together. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get a contract from it, but I mean the experience to go over to a different country, a different continent, 5,000 miles from where you stay and experience that, it, it's really priceless, man. It's really priceless. Out here in Germany, baby, on the move, trying to get it, headed to the next game, the last game of the tour, baby. Got to make it do what it do. Man, I learned a lot while I was out on tour, but the, the main thing I learned was to just just be thankful for, for every opportunity, man. Opportunities like that come few and far between, and you, you really know never know when you might get that chance again. So just, just value your, your moment, live in your moment, you know what I'm saying? So that was one of the main things I learned. I also learned to value that Wi-Fi, man, because you only got Wi-Fi at your house and you be gone all day to your games, on the train, on the bus, you away from the house all day, it's like you dead to the real, you can't contact with your family like you usually do when you're back in the States. So that was something else I learned. I learned to also uh, have confidence and keep confidence because I going, going into this tour, I was kind of hesitant on my belief in myself and my self-confidence because I didn't know if I could compete at this level because I never had played against other pro teams. But going in and playing five games against pro competition and averaging 18.8 .8 points per game and knowing that you can do it, you just come back home with a a knowing like, yeah, I, I, can, I can do this. So that was something that I took away from the tour. Also to be thankful for all your exposure because I got a chance to be interviewed by Eurobasket while over there. And I mean, that was big. Like, guys' timing is crazy. Like, Eurobasket is a big, big thing with the um, FIBA and overseas basketball. So that was some great exposure, and I was very appreciative of that, especially while I was in Germany. And lastly, I'd probably just say, man, don't, don't ever – Leave your house without your passport, man. That's that was also big, man. I had a teammate get stopped, and I'm talking about he was that close to going to jail, man, just because he forgot his passport. He called him back to the house, like, man, can you read my passport? This and that, and it was just some mess, man. So I learned, you know, never travel overseas without that passport.
Well, I mean, you can't get over there without the passport. But never leave the house while over there without your passport, man. Because, man, you get thrown one of them prison, boy, you might, you might be stuck. So, overall, I valued a lot from that experience. I thought I could do this. I mean, it's been two years. It's been too long. But you know about chasing dreams, getting close but didn't succeed. Your mind tell you to give up, but in your heart you still believe. You believe you can make it, but you're running out of patience. I came too far to give up and let my dream be forsaken. I thought I could buy forever, now I'm contemplating my future. Thinking about new goals, the highs and the lows in the past that I maneuver. I remember them days when fans would scream, now I'm alone. Nobody cheer for me I grind alone, nobody here for me So I stay to myself, nobody hear from me All I got is my thoughts My tennis shoes and a ball I enter the gym, look up at my banners And know I paid the cost Should I stay or should I give in? This was my reason for living My hoop dreams got me losing sleep I gotta make a decision but I don't What I've been doing since the tour, man I've been working, spending time with my family. Right when I got back from tour, my brother got married, so that was a great, a great experience, a life, a lifelong memory. Um, I also coach a youth basketball team since I've been back. Uh, besides that, just still working on my game. I, right now, I currently play in a semi-pro league here in the state, so. I'm staying active in case I ever get another opportunity to pursue that situation. So, I mean, besides that, man, just living, just living. Any stories, man? I got a ton of stories from Germany, but some of them I share. Some of them I might even forget to share. So we just start off like, man, after our first game there, we get on the bus. We got to deal with this, like, belligerent woman just talking mad shit, bro. So that was a crazy situation. Uh, another situation, we, we went to a McDonald's at the train station and my guy just gave a homeless man some money or a burger or something and the dude just he just tripped out on him, bugged out on him, like some dude, random dude just walked up and was calling him a nigga, so my dude short tempered. He was finna knock the nigga out. He was like, dude, watch out. So I you know, this my nigga since sixth grade, so I feed over. So I'm like, man, my nigga swing, you know, I'ma swing too. You know, we gotta ride for each other. We all the way 
5,000 miles, we got to have each other back. We're 5,000 miles away from the grill. So that was a crazy situation. We thought we were going to have to knock them out and get this. The crazy thing was the security was standing there like, okay, y'all can knock them out because y'all outside of McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? Because at first when it was in McDonald's, it was a problem. When we stepped outside, they was like, shit, y'all going to knock them out or what? Because they seen he was the aggressor and we was just telling him, you know, get out of my nigga face. He called him a nigga and shit just went south real quick. But that was a crazy situation. Another crazy situation, we, we was on the road for one of our games. We traveled like two, four hours away. So we had to stay in the hotel and it was a shitty hotel. Like we standing outside trying to get in. They trying not to say we res had reservations. And then it's just crazy because it was a shitty hotel. Like nigga, why, how you not gonna let nobody in? We just trying to get some sleep, get up in the morning shake. So anyway, the crazy thing about that, the hotel name was Hotel Ass. I kid you not, a shitty hotel called Hotel Ass, and that was just, <laughs> that was crazy. And then at the hotel, one of the teammates got bit by some bed bugs, bro, so he breaking out and shit, bro. It was just crazy, man. It was crazy, like, hella situations that just was crazy. Oh, another thing in Germany, man, like, so we hooping. After we play, the teams go back and they... After the game over, they have beers. Like, they sit around and drink beer. And that was just crazy. I'm like, nigga, you just who? You an athlete. But they sitting back drinking beer. So, like, man, it was funny. Because, like, after the last game, I was like, well, fuck it. Here, they, everybody, you know, the, the tour over. So, I was like, fuck it. Give me a beer. Man, that was the nastiest shit I tasted ever. But, I mean, it was, I don't drink beer. I don't really drink like that. But it was just so fucking crazy that y'all who be dehydrated and sweat all this shit out. And then drink a beer. Like here in America, you, we drinking water, Gatorade, and shit like that. But them niggas is a hoop. And then they sit around and have a beer and, you know, conversate, just chill. You know what I'm saying? They some real cool people, man. Another story, man. The streets so small over there, bro. But they drive like 80 miles per hour. Like it ain't no speed limit, but the streets so narrow, man. And I can just go on and on and just tell so many stories, man. It's just. It was a great experience, bro, hands down, but it's just, I can go on and on. I, I might as well stop now, because if I, if I don't, I'm going to just keep on blabbering about it. Because, I mean, I, I experienced so much over there, so much culture, so much of the unusual, something that's different. But, I mean, it's, oh, man, it was this one time, bro, we downtown, like in the city area. And it's like a coked out woman, I mean, crackheads everywhere. It's cracky as everywhere. But this motherfucker done pissed on himself, just in the middle of the street. Just pissy, bro. And it's just crazy, bro. Like, man, another time on the train, one of the players about to fight this one dude. Like, it was just, man, we just had some moments, bro. Like, you have to be there to believe it, man. For real. And then, I, I mean, we went downtown once and saw the red light dish. That was crazy, because that's like, uh, the dorm room on a college campus but with prostitutes and I'm like bro that's just unusual bro it's just crazy it's crazy but like I said it was a good experience I'm glad I could share some of my stories with y'all and y'all listen but I mean it's something you just gotta live I mean you gotta travel 5,000 away from your home to realize that it's different it's a big world out there for real it's a big world. She fucking was. She was talking out. She was. Yeah, I'm just talking about the fucking shit. I don't talk to you. I talk to my friend. No bet. Oh, you always in the front, ain't you? Right, motherfucker, over there. That's a damn bad school. Where you at? She also. She on the bars. <laughs> That's what's crazy. You don't even know if people be drunk out here or not. Cause they just be talking shit. She on them bars, man. She trip. All this money. How much you gonna pay me? You had to pay me. How much you gonna pay me? You had to pay me. Ah, shit. She coming up here. Ah, shit. You said what? Think it's nice. Man, you better back up, man. You better back up, man. What was you saying? Chris got ran over. I don't know what that does. I just slapped him. Yeah, ran over. Hey, 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 hey.
Hey, hey, what? Hey, hey! You want to send the chicken to your grandma? You bring me me? I'm in the girls' office. You're crazy, hey, what? Yo, what's it? Yeah. We this is what? Now move, bitch. Move, yeah, move, bitch. Move. Come to the block. Poof and dice. Bitch. How you say something my dick? How you say something my dick? Huh? How you say something my dick? Blast me, fuck. Yo. 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 Hey. Blast me, all the snuffer. Okay, yeah. Come on, what the? Okay, yeah. 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 Come on! You ain't got no dick! <laughs> See, what you mean you got a dick? I know you got a dick! Pull it out! Pull it out there! Pull it out! Pull it out! Let's just see! Pull that shit out there! Pull it out! Pull that dick out, man! You fucking tripping, man! Where that star? My advice to a player that want to go play overseas is, man, if you got the heart and the determination and willing to work hard to achieve your dream or your goal, then, man, go do it. Put in that time. Put in that work, man. I mean, along the way, you're going to have some bumps. You're going to have some bruises. You're going to get knocked down. A million people may tell you no, but all it takes is that one yes. And that's all I needed, man. I've been knocked down. I've been overlooked because of my size. But if I would have gave up a long time ago because somebody said I was too little, I would have never got a chance to experience this pro tour, man. I would have never got the chance to travel overseas just to play basketball, man. So if you got faith in yourself and faith in the Lord, then anything that you dream and that you believe, you can achieve. That's all it takes, man. It's just some faith. Faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. That's real talk, and I believe that. And that's why I feel a guy put me in this situation, and I was able to pursue and achieve my goal. Now, I ain't saying I'm content with just playing in a pro tour, but, man, I would have never imagined when I was five year, years old playing basketball at North Heights that I'd be in Germany and one of their facilities just to shoot a basketball, man. So... My thing is, man, if you got a big enough heart to imagine it, then you can achieve it, man. It's possible. It's possible. Trust me, I, I wholeheartedly believe and have faith in God that he can open that door for you if you work hard enough. And you know what I'm saying? Just like they say, faith without works is dead. If you got faith and you ain't working, then basically your dream is dead. But if you got faith and you working, it's always a lie. It's always an opportunity to fulfill that dream, man. And that's with anything, not just basketball, man. You got to believe in yourself and it'll happen. Trust me, it'll happen. It'll happen. Losing someone is hard, especially hard when it's your immediate family. Losing my grandmother, my dad's mom was especially tough and I really never opened up or vented about it and it's just crazy that you be this close to something amazing happening in your life as achieving your goals and right before that unfolds your your grandmother passed you gotta deal with a loss so right before you finna gain something you deal with a loss and I I can't fathom that and it, it was emotionally tough for me but I never questioned God and I know my grandma can rest easy. So I'd like to dedicate this interview, this documentary and that experience to my grandmother and I thought about her every day while I was over there. All the time I was up on the plane I thought about her. When I'm in the sky I was looking out over the clouds like is this what heaven could look like? And you know, cause I just didn't understand. I didn't understand that how close that loss 
and that gaining experience was for me. And to this day, I still don't, still don't really understand. But like I said, uh, you can't question God. I know my grandma was in a better place, and I just want to dedicate this to him. So I like to follow up with one of the only game films I got from while in Germany, and probably one of the best games I ever played in my life, career-wise. So, and it's just like, it's crazy. So, I dedicate that game to my grandmother, that whole experience to my grandmother. And may you rest in peace. Instrumentals.com instrumentals.com
Man, so after our last game, our last game, we took care of all our business. We got to experience that overseas nightlife, that Germany nightlife. Man, hey, I thought it was crazy in America, bro. Man, the party was live. I'm talking about, man, you would have thought we was shit downtown, but enough of talking. I, I'll let you see for yourself. We leave the club, nigga. It's daytime. I nigga. can't even hear it, bro. It was so loud hey. in there. From North Little Rock, North the North Side, we in all Germany. the way to Germany. We're Shout out, Big Germany. Mike, my boy Chris. Hello, you know we rocking, we hey, rocking, we've been rocking, Jermaine. We been Power rocking. hoops. Holla, holla at your boy. Yeah, bro. We been rocking. One time for the shooting stars, giving us the chance to make a wish, even though it's far. Wishing with a pure heart, good intentions from the start. Looking for opportunities, that's a jar like <laughs> These nursery rhymes had us mind fucked They call me Showtime, but what I say is timeless And I ain't trying to kill imagination I just realized the meaning of imagination Realized what I was taught, realized the dreams I bought Although I haven't conquered, I done came and saw And I'm from Arkansas, where it's hard to dream Cause it's the state to be if you're retiring I hope God intervenes Cause I'm questioning Was my ship meant to sink like a submarine? Damn Life is like the Seahawks Sometimes you're in your end zone Then you get picked off